There are two main camera control grips that people talk about when it comes to, especially the Zcam E2 series. We have the revolver clutch and the port keys key grip. So today we're gonna to take a look, not in depth at either one in particular, but we're gonna draw some comparisons between these two. So if you're thinking about which one to get, maybe it can help you decide. So let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we do all kinds of tests, reviews, unboxings, tutorials, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content, please do consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon to make sure you get notifications when new content is uploaded. So getting right into it, like I said, you have the two handles here. And of course, in terms of appearance and materials, you can see that they are quite different, uh, but that's all on the outside. That's what you can see. Generally speaking, the revolver clutch does feel a little bit nicer. The, the finish and everything looks a little bit more real, I guess you could say. Um, it just feels uh, a little bit more comfortable. The shape and the contours and everything feel better in my hand personally. Uh, and the finish of the wood feels really, really nice. Now the uh, key grip, let me close this here. The key grip um, has a little bit of wood on it, but honestly, at first glance, it doesn't even look like real wood. Um, I believe it is real wood, but if it wasn't, I wouldn't really be surprised. And there's a lot of metal here too. And the actual way that it feels in my hand is not anywhere near as nice. It's not necessarily bad, but we'll talk about a few things as we go through here. For example, where my fingers sit naturally, uh, one of my fingers is on top of this little three-way toggle switch, which doesn't feel like it should be because then I could accidentally bump it. Um, and this part right here that sticks out to go over your hand, and it feels a little bit too narrow and pointy, and it does dig into my hand just a little bit more, making it a little bit more uncomfortable when you're really carrying the weight of a camera on here. Um, it's, it's hard to say, but if, you know, I was to say which one is more comfortable, for me personally, excuse my sweat on here, uh, I would say that the revolver is a little bit, uh, the clutch is a little bit more comfortable to hold. And also, as you can see, uh, because this has a lot of metal in it, uh, it does mean that it might get a little bit more slippery if you have sweaty hands like I do right now. The clutch feels like it, it kind of uh, works with those sweaty hands a little bit more nicely. Um, it doesn't get quite as slippery, and also the metal is not going to get quite as hot or as cold uh, when you're dealing with uh, temperature differences in terms of where you're shooting. Now, once again, in terms of quality, the revolver clutch here just feels really, really well made, well finished. Everything feels very polished and smooth. All the gaps here, they're all even and flat, and there's no um, nothing that looks like it's going to come apart. Um, just It looks like it was put together with intention and like it was crafted very, very carefully. That's not to say that the materials on the key grip are bad. The materials themselves, I mean, it's a little bit of maybe real, maybe fake wood, plus some metal. You know, you can't really say that it's bad quality, but, you know, things like this rubber here, um, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but this little bit of rubber here is already starting to flap out, and I know other people have had it just come completely out, um, even when they, you know, took it out of the box. Uh, the little three-way toggle switch here had a little rubber tip on it, immediately came off. Um, not that it really matters that much, but, you know, it just kind of makes me feel a little bit more uneasy about the actual quality of this when things start coming off that I don't think they're supposed to. Maybe feel like they could have thought about that a little bit more. I'm surprised nobody noticed it. The joystick here, again, this is hard to show, but this is one of the worst feeling joysticks that I've ever felt. It just doesn't move up, down, left, and right enough to make me really feel confident that I'm actually moving it. Um, and it does click as well. So like when I'm trying to move it in any one direction with any sort of, you know, force that feels like I'm accidentally clicking it instead of pushing it. Just, it's not a very good joystick. I don't like this joystick. I like the functionality that it, you know, has potential to possess, but I just feel like it's a really bad joystick. Now, well, on that note, uh, I feel like the uh, rosette on the key grip is easier to actually tighten down because you have this consistently round uh, knob here and you can just, you know, grab it and push it. It has a very nice texture to it, easy to tighten down onto your camera. Whereas the clutch has a little bit of a wavy raised and lowered uh, texture. And depending on the position of it, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get in there and just tighten it that last little bit. Um, it's a very, very picky difference there, but uh, I wanted to point that out. And also this does have these holes on here. So if you need to stick like an Allen wrench or something in there and get it really nice and tight, you could do that. But without doing that, I do feel like this key grip rosette came loose while I was using it uh, much more often than the uh, clutch has. Maybe that's just me, but I did feel that uh, it came loose more often while using it. 
Also, the screw here on the rosette, when I first got this and took it out of the box, the screw was actually not sticking out enough, and I couldn't actually screw it into my camera because it just wasn't long enough to catch in the rosette. And if you take this whole rosette off with these four screws here, then you can see on the back side of this, uh, it's actually just a screw inside of this little knob here, and you have to push the screw all the way back through, and then there's a little, uh, a little like this rubber gasket that's holding it in place. Um, but this could very easily get pushed back. I could probably even do it now if I wanted to. Let's, let's try that. So you can see I can push this screw back into the rosette, and probably at this point, it's not sticking out enough to actually screw into my camera, and I'm gonna have to completely remove this again to fix that, because the adjustment is on the back, and because the screw is not one piece with this knob, it's actually just a screw stuck into a hole in the middle of this knob. So if that happened out in the field, or like, you know, just now I just pushed it with my finger, if it happened in my bag and I took it out when I went to go shoot on set, I wouldn't be able to use this, and I just have to throw it and, you know, not use it. But with the clutch, the actual screw is one piece, I believe, um, with this knob here. So it's impossible to push that back into the rosette and render it useless. It is one solid piece with that knob that you use to tighten it. So that's not going to be a problem here, but I do suspect that this can be a problem. You can see how easily I just pushed it back into the rosette here. And as of now, this would be useless. I won't be able to screw this onto my camera without completely removing the whole rosette, pushing it through, sliding that rubber gasket back down to hold the screw in place, and then put this back on. So that's been a little bit frustrating. Now, one of the other big differences between the key grip and the clutch that I should mention probably fairly early in this video is the fact that, yes, the key grip does have a lot more potential functionality. You can use the built-in length splitter to control the camera with both this and something like the Portkey's BM5 at the same time if you want to use touchscreen control as well as the control from the grip here, uh, which is nice. You know, you have multiple connections built in. This can also connect to and control and power uh, the Nano, um, Tilta Nano follow focus, which if you're using that is great, but if you're not, it's completely pointless. So. I think that that's going to be probably the one, and to be completely honest, the one and only real big selling point for the key grip over the clutch is if you use the Nano, then maybe this does have a lot more benefit than if you don't. Because if you don't, this knob on the front here does nothing. You can't reprogram it to do anything else. So this is just nothing for me. That means that all I have is the joystick and this knob back here. I also don't really use the touchscreen control on the Portkey's BM5 all that much. Uh, I haven't used it at all in the past maybe six months, I guess. I, I'm bad at estimating time, but that is also not going to be really useful for me. However, uh, this does have more potential for things like that if you are taking advantage of them. If not, just be aware that it's kind of a big drawback because you just have this dial here that ends up being useless. On the clutch, on the other hand, you have two dials that are always useful, and you can reprogram them to whatever you want, and you can actually program multiple uses to them. You can click it so that way you can switch between multiple uses. So, you know, you can have uh, more than just two functions that you control with this, plus the record button, of course, even though it is a much simpler uh, grip. To reprogram those functions, though, you do need to actually plug this into a computer with this USB cable. And I, I found that actually to fit a USB cable onto here, you do have to remove this rosette because um, most of the, the connectors are a little bit too fat to squeeze in there. But you have to reprogram this with an actual computer. It's easy enough to do once you do that, but just be aware that you can't do it without a computer. Whereas the key grip has basically a computer built in. You can see there's a screen here, which we'll, we'll show you in just a second but uh, you can reprogram everything from the actual grip itself, which is very, very handy if you're planning on switching up the uh, programmed modes of your dials and stuff on the fly, which honestly, I don't. I've, I've set my uh, clutch and it's just as it is. I'm, I'm never really going to change it again, or at least I don't foresee myself needing to change it again. It's programmed the way that I like to use it and that's the end. In order to gain that ability though, and also to do a few of the other things that this can do, which the clutch cannot, it does require batteries, and they do include a couple batteries here, uh, and we'll put those in and show you how this looks in a second, but it does require batteries, and for some people that may have extra benefit, for somebody like me who doesn't necessarily uh, need to change the settings on the fly, doesn't need to power the nuclear uh, Nucleus Nano, whatever it's called, I don't need batteries and I don't want to have to charge extra batteries. I don't want to have to remember to take the batteries out when I'm not using it. I don't want to show up on set with dead batteries and then a useless handle, a useless, I mean, you can still hold it, but you know, you can't actually take advantage of the control features. So 
I prefer personally the no battery solution with revolver clutch because I don't take advantage of the extra benefits. But if you do, maybe that's worth it for you. However, uh, to put those in, you have this little door on the bottom here, swing that open and then you put the batteries in. I've also found that this battery door can be a little bit tricky to close. Okay. Looks good there, but you have to really push it down and then slide this um, latch here. It doesn't automatically click in very well. So you actually have to push it down and really make sure that it's latched in there. So in terms of battery doors, this is not one of the better ones that I've used, but you know, it is what it is. If you care about weight, once you get the batteries in there, especially the key grip is a fair bit heavier than the uh, the clutch. So if you want a light rig or a compact rig, the size is also quite different. So the, the, the clutch is a bit more low profile and that's actually come in handy when I've wanted to mount a microphone, for example, on the same side on my camera cage and it does have clearance with the clutch, but it didn't have clearance with the key grip, both because of the size difference and because of the location of the rosette, which means that basically they're gonna be sitting uh, at this position on my camera, leaving a lot more clearance above the clutch than I have with the key grip. So again, when I was trying to mount an on-camera microphone on the same side as my grip, I had clearance with the clutch, I did not with the key grip. So that may also uh, affect some people depending on how they have the camera set up. One more small detail before we get the clutch out of the way for a minute is that the clutch comes with this 2.5 to 2.5 coiled cable to control the camera. And you can see here about how long it is um, in relation to the clutch. And just, you know, generally speaking, I don't know if you can really estimate how long that is, but obviously it's a coiled cable, so uh, you can stretch it out a bit more if you want. But I know some people don't like coiled cables. The key grip comes with a fairly long non-coiled cable. So let me take this Velcro off here and show you the full length of it, if I can, there we go. It's pretty long. Um, so if you prefer non-coiled cables, or if you need uh, a little bit longer of a cable to maybe put this onto the end of an, uh, an arm for a shoulder rig, for example, then that may be a good cable for you. And also the way it connects on this side is with a recessed uh, USB port. So it's actually recessed and kind of protected inside the grip there. Finally, before powering this on, I do want to point out that the record button on the clutch is a little bit softer. It feels very, very similar to the shutter button on a camera, a typical shutter button. It doesn't have like a clear click click, but um, it feels good generally if you're used to using a typical camera. It feels very similar to that, a little bit springy. Uh, whereas the button, the record button on the key grip has like a click to it, it's just a clicky button. And for some people, you might like that. And it is, I think, a little bit easier to confirm that you've uh, started or stopped recording with the click of this button compared to the clutch, but uh, it's never really given me a problem either. So just, they do feel a little bit different and you can be aware of that. As you can see, the record button also does power on the Q-Grip once you have the batteries in there. So now you can see the display a little bit here. Uh, this will display by default the three functions that you have programmed to the three positions of this three-way toggle switch. And you can just quickly toggle between them. So for me, I have iris, ISO, and menu programmed into here. And menu is one that I was really excited about and then really disappointed about. And we're gonna talk about why. So with the menu function selected, you could use the joystick or the dial to long hold and open up the actual camera menu on the Zcam uh, E2, which I have a program to right now. And then you can use either the joystick or the dial to scroll through the actual menu, click to select things, and you can actually navigate through the menu from the grip, which is amazing. And then you can also back out of things. You need to maybe uh, hold this up, push the joystick up for a couple seconds and it will back out. It's not the fastest navigation of the menu, uh, but it is some navigation of the menu without having to actually touch the camera, which can be very, very useful. Um, but the downside of that is that when you actually completely back out of the menu, so that way the menu screen is no longer displayed on the camera, then this automatically in this menu position, when you scroll the wheel, will adjust your uh, shutter speed. And for me, shutter speed is one of the few settings that I almost never need quick access to. If by default that controlled aperture or even ISO, I can see that being a little bit more useful, uh, but when you're not in the actual menu screen, it controls your shutter speed, which is terrible for me. I don't want to change my shutter from 180 degree shutter most of the time. And I also don't want to keep that menu screen open all the time 
to avoid that because if I have on-screen display on, then I can see the menu on the actual monitor the whole time. So I want to be able to close out that menu and I don't want this to then control my shutter speed. Of course, you can switch it out of that position, but because of where it's located, my finger accidentally can switch it into that very easily and then I'll change my shutter speed without really noticing it. And that is a no-no for me. Also, if you could reprogram that kind of accidental second function of that, then that would be fine. You could have even more functionality of it. You could open the menu with it, and then when the menu is not open, you could then control something else, which would be great, but you can't. It's just that's the way it is. For whatever reason, when the menu screen is not open, it controls your shutter speed. So you need to be aware of that. It's a major drawback of the amazing feature of being able to control your menu from this grip. So I'm not going to go in depth into all of the things that you can do with this. Um, I'll show you a chart on uh, screen of all the things that you can program to these custom functions. But there's a little button here that you can then push to go into the menu. And you can use the, the controls, the, the dial here to go through. And you can update your functions. You can choose which camera you're connected to. You can you know update your firmware and things like that. So all of that can be done from the grip instead of having to connect it to a camera, which is nice. But if you don't have batteries in this, this whole grip becomes useless. If your batteries die, the whole grip becomes pretty much useless. So that is um, kind of a drawback. I would like the ability to put batteries in, program it, and then use this without batteries with you know minimal functionality, maybe not necessarily the full functionality, but at least some functionality without batteries. That would be really awesome. But uh, the fact that you do need batteries to do absolutely anything is a big drawback for me personally. So just a few final notes out of fairness to the key grip. I feel like I've bashed it quite a lot. Again, it's definitely going to be a very useful grip for people who can take full advantage of it. But if you can't, uh, it is very limited because, you know, this dial is useless. Uh, you need batteries and so on and so forth. It's not as comfortable. It's not as well made. The quality control seems to be a little spotty. Um, but, you know, you do get this little rosette adapter. If you need that to connect it to your camera, you get a very comfortable feeling little um, strap. If you want to use this, you know, you can connect that to the actual grip and then it will hold your hand in there. I personally don't and will not use that. But if you do want one that is very comfortable, you get, you know, the battery charger included, of course. Um, you get a lot more overall with this than you do with the very minimalistic clutch. But for me, the build quality, the quality control, the size and the comfort of this grip is amazing for me. Uh, it's, it's compact and it's very comfortable. You don't need batteries, which is huge. In its simplicity, it has been very, very useful for me. The only thing that would make me strongly prefer the key grip over the clutch is the fact that you can control the menu from the key grip. But like I said, there are major drawbacks, at least for the moment, to that. If that's updated, then I will have to reconsider a little bit because that is very, very useful. I'm repeating myself at this point. If you have any questions about things that I did not cover in terms of the differences between these two, then please let me know. Again, I know this wasn't a really in-depth review of the key grip. It was more meant to be a comparison for those people who are looking to choose one of these for their camera, especially the Zcam E2 series, because that's what I use. That's what I'm familiar with. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. And as always, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, thank you for watching.